Hi everyone. Um, awesome. Can everyone hear me? So I'm testing. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, thanks for joining from my living room in Provence. Uh, happy to uh, see all of you coming. Uh, I'm going to start by um, a little point on what's going on in France right now. Uh, not a lot of information are coming up. At the moment, uh, what we know is that the start of the end of the quarantine will start uh, May 11, but the Prime Minister just announced that if the French don't behave, it could be postponed. And we don't really like really behave. So we'll see how it's going regarding restaurant, hotel, museum. We don't have information. Don't follow really what you see on Facebook and social media. We have no idea. We have a tourism um, meeting on May 14, and they told us we'll get more information by the end of May. Personally, I don't think um, everything will reopen before August and I think September. Uh, as soon as we have information, we'll email you, uh, publish on uh, Facebook, and you will know. But that's the information we have from now on. Number of days and the number of cases are going down, which is good. But for tourism, we were the first to close, like many other countries will be the last to open. So I thought this time was good for um, some training and um, Sorry, technically, I'm not an expert of Zoom, so that's only my second one. Um, I hope you like it, and I think there is a way you can ask me questions for uh, the end of the um, uh, at the end of the um, presentation. So I'm going to do a presentation of Provence. Um, so Provence, as a France, you all know it. We all love it. Our office is in Provence, so we are lucky. The weather is amazing. Um, so let me, sorry, I'm not an expert. Okay. So Provence, uh, you have a big idea of Provence as uh, of France, as east, in between the French River, uh, nearby the French River, the three main cities are Avignon, Aix-en-Provence, and Marseille. Um, so that's the main city and some important information how to get there. So the main airport is Marseille uh, with national flight. We don't have really international flight in Marseille. The nearest airport will be then Nice, which is two hour drive uh, west. Uh, and then three station, TGV station, uh, Avignon, Aix-en-Provence and Marseille. Actually, the one of Aix-en-Provence is in between Marseille and X. So if you have guests, for example, going to take a cruise in Marseille due to the traffic in Marseille, we always recommend the client to arrive in Aix-en-Provence because the traffic within the city uh, is really crazy. So in fact, arriving in Aix-en-Provence train station make everything easier. Um, so that's it. And you have TGV from Paris, we are well deserved. Paris, Lyon, um, Nice, but it's a TGV, but it, trans it does transfer, uh, transfer in um, TER, so slower train between Marseille and uh, Nice. So a little, that's the way we access. Um, now, um, for Provence, we do recommend a minimum of four nights. Um, three full day minimum to visit Provence. I think the best for me is five full day, six nights. Um, I always uh, figure that if your clients stay three nights, it will be maybe better for them to stay in one hotel. If they stay more, it would be better to split in between two regions. So the Luberon and Avignon area will go over after, which is more north, or Aix-en-Provence and the Alpi, which is more south. Um, we always tell the client, try to come, when you come in Provence even three days, try to get a Saturday or Wednesday where you have the nicest and biggest market in Provence. Um, usually when, personally as a GMC, we work on the program, the first two things we do when we look at the program, you send us the date, the first thing we're going to do is go, we're going to check if we have a Saturday or Wednesday. 
that's the way we work on the program because we want to include either Saint Remy or Al Market or Avignon Market, um, knowing that on Sunday there is almost no market and on Mon Monday there is no market nowhere in France. Um, the lavender field bloom mid July to mid August. I know many of your guests want to come uh, to see the lavender field. Either if it's not one of the top um, must do, I don't think it's the best season to come because it's a uh, French holiday, so traffic is crazy. Uh, Provence is also for the French uh, the first destination for summer holiday. The weather is really warm. Uh, we can compare to Florida, so it's really, really warm. Um, so warm that, for example, we cannot do hiking. Uh, because most of the trails are closed uh, to avoid uh, forest fire. Um, many rivers are low water, so we cannot do kayaking. Um, and so it's really, except for the bloom, I think May, April, we had amazing. Next week, they are saying around 20 way, 28 degrees Celsius, which I think is 90 Fahrenheit in the afternoon, so it's pretty nice for uh, early May. So May, June, uh, September, October, we are local going to the beach to swim in June, in September. So the weather is really, really good. Um, as a local, for example, I go in the morning, the afternoon is too warm. So I'm getting old, the young maybe, but not me. So that's something your client needs to know. If they want to see the lavender bloom, it's mid-July, mid-August. It's going to be warm, it's going to be busy, there's going to be a lot of traffic. For example, you are going to visit, you go back to your hotel at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. is when everyone will go out of the, the beach. So traffic is going to be crazy, while May, June is much better. Um, also another thing, um, with mid-November to March, a lot of hotels. So I know we have agent for Viatio as well, Signature. So I didn't include hotel, but many hotels outside the city are closed. Then some reopen for Christmas, but um, many are closed. Also, it's a destination of outdoor with the, um, I go back to the market, the hiking, the, you know, even the Beau Castle is outside. So um, it's not really a dis winter destination. So let's continue. Sorry. So the three main city we have Avignon, where many uh, cruise um, river crews are departing. So it's for us it's Northern Provence. Actually, for people from Aix and Marseille, Avignon is too north for us. Um, it's not. It's perfect for many crews. Um, it's a small town. It's not a big town like Aix-en-Provence and Marseille. So you have a little bit more the atmosphere of the village. It's perfect if you apply them into a uh, red wine uh, with Chateau Neuf and the Côte du Rhône only 30 minutes. So, for example, if you have a family with, you know, all the family wants Provence and the dad say, yeah, but I'm into wine and good wine and red wine, then Avignon is a good mix. Uh, Avignon de Luberon is a good mix because you're maybe 30 minutes from Chateau Neuf du Pape, and um, we can have really upscale wine there. Uh, you have wine all over Provence. I'm talking about red wine. Red wine Chateau Neuf is considered as one of the best wine in France. So for someone who knows his wine, um, it can be interesting if they want a mix of Provence and wine. Um, it's a small town. So uh, you have the Palais de Pop Calas, the Pont, uh, Pont d'Avignon. So you need, I think, four or five hours to visit Avignon uh, with a guide. And then you know most of the city and you can be on your own. So, and you have many restaurants um, from the small bistro to uh, three star Michelin restaurants. So it's really easy time to walk and find your way. And maybe after four days, get. Um, it used to want coffee and go every day there. So really have a life like a local. So it's kind of really nice. It's, it's less rich than Aix-en-Provence. So the um, building not, uh, haven't been renovated. They are a little less war than in Aix-en-Provence where you have more money on all the building and the mansion um, front have been renovated. 
difference, more stone, more gray. Um, so that's um, not my say. Uh, I know a lot of you have a bad, bad impression of Marseille, and we understand that. Uh, personally, as a local, if I ask you all the the staff in my company, everyone prefer we all prefer Marseille than Aix-en-Provence. But um, I understand if um, if ever you you have a bad image, Marseille changed a lot, really changed a lot during the last six, seven years. Uh, it's the second, second largest city in France, so really be careful with the short expression. Traffic is a nightmare um, in, in Marseille. So when you have a short expression with client arriving in um, Marseille, uh, don't take a train in 30 minutes. Even if on the map it shows it's at five minutes, it's, it's yeah, be, be careful about that. Um, um, the airport, what's good is the airport is outside, in fact, near the Aix-en-Provence train station. So you don't have to go in Marseille if you arrive by train, uh, by flight. So less curiosity, um, the center has been fully renovated. It's more busy, it's more cultural. It's where um, for century, um, all the, um, I don't like to say refugee, but it's not true, but many, um, let's say, I guess from other country from a Mediterranean Sea came in France. So Morocco, uh, Greek, um, Turkish, you have a mix, and that's what, as personal, I like. It's the mix in Marseille. Um, yes, there is one, one, two districts really dangerous, but if you don't go there, you don't risk anyone, anything. So don't go there. You know, it's like, I don't think, any big city in, in the world where there is one district, you don't go, you know that. So, yeah, um, it's been on seven hills, so it's not so easy to walk in Marseille, a lot of hills. Um, you have the old town called the old panier and the arbor. Everything is at walking. It's really, I think for guests who already came and are like a little scared about Marseille. Try one day, just one day. Tell them like, can you stay for a day and visit for a day? And we are gonna keep in the old town, the old arbor with the shopping area and just make a detour to see Notre Dame de la Garde, which is for me one of the nicest cathedral in France. And a lot of people don't go, but it's really beautiful inside. So try, try to get some guests to Marseille. Another famous Aix Provence, which is center. So it's easy to reach Liberon, Alpi, Avignon is 35 minutes if you drive like me, 45 minutes if you drive safely. So it's really easy. Uh, many highway going um, in the Alpi, going everywhere nice renovated you see all this facade you have yellow pink people really like it it's safe it's a um, student city you have um you know um season workshop which is really nice the facade it's it's safe the only issue i have if i have to compare to avignon uh because marseille is separate is that in avignon if you talk about the hotel the nice hotel are within the center um really easy in X, my issue is the Villa Galici, for example, or the Pigone. They say walking distance. I'm not sure for American, it's, it's really walking distance. We talk about a good 15 minutes. Uh, Villa Galici is on the top of a hill. So that's the only thing. It's walkable, but it's not right in the center, like you're going to go in Avignon and the coffee is down and um, you're going to have the Palais des Papas one minute. Um, the, nice four five star hotel are a little bit outside of the city center but it's great for shopping it's really great for if your client wants a day of shopping usually we take them there uh there's for everyone the teenager the mom so everyone so now um maybe i'm gonna go back to the first page okay hold on. you see i'm not ready okay so um you see avignon here you see aix-en-provence here easy. West, it's what we call the Alpi. East is what we call the Luberon. Easy. <laughs> so uh, Luberon and Alpi. So we are going to start 
um, by the Luberon. Um, so Avignon is just there, maybe to go to, let's say, Gord, 30, 35 minutes, really easy. To, if you have clients seeing in the Luberon, uh, like the Bastide de Gord, if they have to take a flight, Marseille is a good one hour, 15 minutes. So Aix-en-Provence is a good 15 minutes. So what you have to see a lot, so it's where you get the nicest um, lavender field. So everyone know the picture at the bottom, uh, which is in gold, but know them um, all here, uh, at, all here, uh, les at, et cetera. It's where you have most of the lavender fields, really most of them. Um, you have a lot of things to do. Isle la Soc, the largest uh, European uh, flea market, every Saturday and Sunday during all summer. Um, Gold, the famous village with the Bastide, where um, you can also do bike. And we have e-biking, so you just push the button and it bike for you. Uh, Roussy, you're famous for um, the red crayon where you do painting. So we can do painting class. You can see the crayon where they take the, um, the ground to make this painting, quite famous. Um, so it's more hill. Um, it's more famous for the small village. It's quite rich. Uh, let's say the truth, most of those village within it's private home formed by um, rich Parisian who come only in summer. So for example, if you come in winter, everything is closed because they're not there. It's not the time. So, but amazing village. Minerve is famous for the truffle. So we do truffle hunting there. Um, hot air ballooning. This is the only area where you can do hot air ballooning because Provence is really windy. We have the Mistral, um, which bloom really, really strong. So um, Polkak is maybe one hour for gold. So and start at 6 a.m. in the morning. So really early morning. So it's going to be mainly small village uh, in which each one you have um, workshop. Um, we have um, one workshop where they made candlelight, and actually they have been the one renovating all the candlelight in Versailles. So more art, more uh, bourgeois, we say in France, a little bit more luxury. They don't open their door um, as much as they will do in the Alpi. Uh, and the Verdun Canyon, which I love. If you have kids and they want to do um, kayaking, hiking, I love it. It's also one of the nicest drive do in Provence. Actually, when, I think, I don't know which car you buy, buy uh, when you buy, I think it's a Ferrari or something like that. They give you a, a book with all the, um, the best road in the world and the road of the Verdun is the third one. So when you go in summer, you have all those luxury cars during this road. So it's really nice. Um, never forget, we can all um, arrange picnic with, uh, we can do it, or we can arrange it with your hotel. So it's, it's, a, it's really a nice drive to do. Uh, if you don't like one term, don't take this road. It's really nice. So now the Alpi. The Alpi for me is more authentic, more farms, more agricole. So actually, it's where we do all our gourmet tours. The difference, if you visit Luberon and Alpi, you will see the difference in winter. Um, Luberon, like I said, many doors are closed during the winter because it's really rich and beautiful village, well renovated, owned by Parisian. While the Alpi, actually, you have local living there. Even if it's still expensive, um, we cannot afford a house there. It's still local living there. Um, so just to see, um, North, you have Avignon here. You have, I don't know if you see my mouse. Um, so at the bottom uh, right, this is going to be X. And then on, um, uh, on the left is going to be R. The, so R is not the LP, I is the Camargue. Um, me, it's my favorite area because I feel that there is more to do, more to see without driving so much. So that's personal. A lot of people prefer Luberon. They have this image. Um, they prefer clean. I prefer messy. So I, I think it's maybe why I like it. 
Um, it's where you have all the olive tree, olive tree uh, fields. So it's really nice. It's actually where we have a lot of fun. So it's where we do all of Gumito, really all of Gumito. Um, and the two famous villages, Saint-Rémy-de-Provence and Libo de provence are there. Um, there's so much. So Saint-Rémy, but other villages. So Saint-Rémy, like I say at the beginning, the market, we always try to mix um, a detour with Saint-Rémy on a Wednesday when you have the market. We can do the Van Gogh walk, but we really try to do because clients like it. They want to go and we all guys know actually the um, person selling products on site, so we can do testing there. We can do testing uh, olive oils, chocolate, chocolate is Saint-Rémy too, it's just chocolate maker really, really nice. Uh, les Carrières de Lumière, so if you see the Bois de Provence, there's a bottom uh, right picture, so that's the Bois de Provence with the castle on the top. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but in summer, they have free animation for the kids. Um, so my English is going to be good enough and I need to make some research, but they have medieval activity for the kids uh, with guides with costume. It's really fun and they do it in English. And under the mountain that you see, there is actually the Carrière de Lumière. I think it's not possible to really explain what it is and the impression it is, it gives. People are always so, so, I'm not sure I want to go. And when they went there, they just loved. They really love it. So it's Crayer, so under the mountain, they have painting showing on the wall with music. That's it, it's a show. <coughs> it's 11 euro. Usually, so you're like, I don't want to go. And then they talk to the guy during the, um, the tour and they say, oh yeah, yeah, I would love to go. So Liberon, the first region we talk about, for me, oh, a day tour is a must. And then if you want to do biking, it's going to be Liberon. Alpi, I would say two days. Two days nice, one day gourmet tour. And one day mixing, uh, for example, an um, Alpi and also Little Camargue. So that's some of the other village, uh, the Van Gogh Al Um At the bottom is a favorite bistro, but for the one who knows us, who we welcome in French, usually we always go to this bistro, um, the Paradou, which is one of the best, and like you say, really, really local. So. Um, and then we're going to go a little about Camargue. So I don't think if I can come and say I want to see Camargue, but because I think that Arlen and Saint-Rémy, we, so we were in the Alpes, so the Alpes are on the right of the map, and the Camargue is actually a natural park where we grow our bulls and horse. So you still have some bull fighting. Uh, it's famous for um, the bulls and horse, so we do horse riding. Um, it's also when you have river cruise between Arles and Avignon, so everything starts from there. And actually, it's where we, you have amazing Roman and Greek history, because when the Roman and Greek, Greek arrived in France the first time, they arrived by here in Arles and Nîmes. That, that's why you have amazing uh, monuments in Arles and Nîmes. Uh, you have um, the Arena, the Pont du Gard, and many other uh, remains. Um, and for the one who loves nature, it's Camargue. I will be able to send you some inform more information about Camargue, but just something I want to show to, to you that um, many clients want to go and extend to Nîmes and Pont du Gard. Um, yeah, to see all that. And all new this year, you see at the bottom is the Luma Art, is an art modern museum. Just came from nowhere, uh, same designer than the Guggenheim uh, and the Louis Vuitton Foundation. So you see that in the middle of a uh, Roman town. It's kind of, you cannot miss it. You see it from the highway and you cannot miss it. It's really unique. <laughs> you like it or you don't like it. It's a school, it's a modern art museum. Um, also, because a lot of people don't know, Arles is for us in France, the capital of uh, um, picture. Yeah, picture, let's say picture. 
So every year they have uh, one of the largest in the world uh, picture show. Um, so Luma is also about that. And so I want to talk about some of the activities because as you see outside of cities, um, we do a lot of outdoor in Provence. So we have the kayak, like I told before. So we can do at the Pont du Gard, that's something we can do um, here. Or we do them nearby the Ile de la Sorgue du Nuberon, the bike. So we do leisure bike. We are not professional biker, we won't do a five, six day tour or bike. Um, leisure bike, we have e-bike. We have um, sidecar, it's all new. Uh, sidecar tour, people like it. Uh, a lot of boat tours, so usually they depart either from Marseille or from Cassis. Um, so Cassis is for us the charming uh, small arbor village, really, really nice. They also hide in Camargue. And I'm going to continue with the wine. <laughs> Just a little wine and food, and then, yeah. So for the wine, like I said before, Avignon and Chateauneuf and Côte du Rhône. If you have someone who knows his wine, already been in Burgundy or Bordeaux, uh, he's going to ask you for that. So Chateauneuf and um, Chateauneuf and uh, Côte du Rhône, so it's just north of Avignon. Then you will see this is that Provence wine. We do red. Uh, I'm from Bordeaux, so we do red, but it's a little acid. You have some good, but we are famous for the rosé and the white wine. So we can include red, but it's not why you come in Provence. You come to actually uh, test rosé and white wine. So usually, yeah. So you have all the uh, wine area. So we can do a lot of wine testing. So usually we do the private one. Um, family own estate, which is good because the wine tourism in Provence is not really like in Bordeaux it's not south it's not professional so you are welcomed by the owner actually in the winery so it's kind of nice it's really nice um so that's the wine we do so yeah Chateauneuf, Côte de Provence and Bandol so if you have to remember um Bandol um so I'm going back to the map you see Bandol here it's where you have Cassie this is considered as the best um, rosé wine um, in the south of France. So, yeah. Okay, so Lisa, sorry. I'm just repeating because I have a question. So here where you have Yardignon North, you have Chateauneuf and Côte du Rhône, 30 minutes. And then all the color you have is wine area, actually just name differently so Coteau d'Aix, Coteau Varrois, we love names, we love appellation and names but for us the best rosé is Bandol, it's here and what makes the difference is that we are nearby the sea so it gives us really nice taste. So that's all we do about the food, the cooking class, the visit of the market, farm visit, Cali sont une expo de Provence, factory visit actually, uh, market, chocolate testing, so everything, you know, around food, we love it. Um, so I will send you the link to access the, all this, the PDF. We work on the full list of all the markets, all the region. So you see nothing on Monday, Never have nothing on Monday, but we'll send you at least the list of the market if you need to. So, yeah. So, you know us. So, it, does anyone have some question for me? You have to type, I think, the question. Yeah, I'm not good at that. Hello? Uh, sorry. <laughs> So um, I think you need to start the conversation. If you have a picture, I don't see any any question. I'm gonna send. So it was a short presentation. I don't want to go too much in the hotel because you know we don't really do hotels. 
but we know all the hotels. So if you have any question about the hotels, I'd be pleased to help. If you want with the PDF, I can send you a list of the hotel in um, which hotel are the best in Alpi, in the Liberon, etc. So I can do that for you. Uh, I don't judge, I give my opinion, but I don't judge, but we have really, really good hotel. I don't think we have something comparable to Palace, but we start to really have really nice five-star hotel. Uh, so yeah, I'm sending you the PDF. If you have any question, you let me know. On our website, we also have a program presentation for the tour. So yeah, that's the presentation. If you have any question, you have my email address or contact. Um, next month will be champagne. Yeah, I'm into wine. So next one will be champagne. If you want to know a little bit about champagne, I try to keep it small. If you need any training, I try to keep it, let's say not cash, I don't like say casual, but simple. But if you have question for clients who want really came, you want something different, you feel free, we can do a Zoom call, we can do something more special. You let me know if you need to, you know, your team or yourself, you want to learn about anything. You let me know and I'll let you know when the um, well, let you know when the campaign is coming. And hello, are you seeing booking requests coming in for next year? I would love to I would love to see new requests. Uh, we don't have new requests, but I think it's because of friends. We don't have a date. And I'm sure as the day we have a date, that business is coming up. And even if it's August 30, that's good. People are waiting, and I'm sure they are all waiting. Like, when France is gonna open? And okay, it's open in September. I'm sure we're gonna have business. Um, I think we're gonna have last minute business uh, because people don't want the same issue than now. But um, right now, no, we had two requests this week. Usually we have 30 requests a day, so yeah. <laughs> but the whole team is there. Um, we are lucky in France, we are paying a lot of tax. So actually the state is paying the salary of my employees. So I will not complain anymore in my life, I think, about the French tax, but they are actually paying the salary because they don't want unemployment. So they want to be sure we take back all our staff after. So that's it. Um, estimation of France will uh, open. Okay, Elisa, um, August, let's be realistic. Tour de France. So we don't have information. Some people say July 15, some people say August, some say September, some people say 2022. The Tour de France, which is one of the, so it's a bike a race for the one who don't know, who is actually the, one of the most uh, watched show on TV, uh, sports show on TV watch in the world, is moved to August 29th. That's it. We will open on August 29th I'm because they didn't sign for August 29th without having the states saying it will be okay. It's a huge thing. It's for it's it's a race will last a month. You have with the team etc. Maybe one thousand people to find rooms and they go in area where there is few hotels. So they didn't move without knowing. So for me, at worst. It'd be August 29th in Nice, the Tour de France is departing. So that's the only thing I know. And I, my in my head, that's what's going to happen. So we'll see everyone. <laughs> but I hope to see you all in September in France. So um, thank you for your time. We'll let you know when Champagne is coming. If you have any more questions, if you want a discussion, about anything, you let me know. Me and the team, we're at your disposal all the time. Thank you. Thank you.